Okay, in order to basically do a giant undo here because I've gotten a lot of different styles on this, I'm going to come over to this layer, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to slide down to clear layer style. Now unfortunately, that may well be just beyond your, let me just try to re size that so that you can see that happening. So I'm going to go down here to where it says clear layer style and that's going to take me back to basically this particular layer without any extra stuff on it. So that is my first portion of it. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do because I want the other portion of the quote in here but I want it to look different my best bet is to go ahead and insert a new layer and I'm going to call this lighting fire layer because that's going to be my new one. Now notice over here I've got education is not and then lighting fire is my new layer. Because I'm clicked onto this layer even though I can see the other layers this is the only layer I'm truly impacting. So now I'm going to come over here to my text tool. This time I'm going to choose my next um, font, which in this case is Flame. And because I don't know this font very well, I'm going to start small. And I'm going to choose a um, perhaps a red color this time out. And I'm going to now come down here and type in And I'm not quite sure that that's the way I would do that as a final piece, but this is a lot of fun to play with and you can do anything you want. I'm going to go ahead and start by making it larger. And I'm going to go ahead and commit that. And that's okay. Not terribly, terribly good, but at least it's something. Um, excuse me. Let me grab my move tool here. And I can kind of position these. If you go back to your beginning of your design, you know that grouping things together makes them visually become a unit even though they are made up of two or three different pieces here. So I've got this particular piece and of course if I come back to my text tool I could play with the fonts here but this is where I would strongly suggest that you do one layer style and then if you don't like it undo it and then redo a different layer style so if I wanted to go to image effects these would be different types of color combinations if I wanted to do uh, neon and perhaps I wanted to outline it in blue or color it in blue I could do that but again if I don't like that my best bet is to do an undo of that style so that I don't get myself so bogged down in a particular area that I can't see anything. So here I've chosen a WOW Neon which could work or if I wanted to do uh, a Chrome perhaps I could do that. I'm going to let you play with those a little bit more so that you can get those and I'll be right back. Okay I'm going to prepare my web page and give some thought to how big I want my image to be. Now we don't always have the luxury of knowing exactly how big we're going to want to make this image but in this particular case I know that this particular box is going to be filled with that image. In this particular case I can see that it is 45 percent wide or 419 pixels and I probably want to make it um, a definite 420 pixels or 425. So instead of relying on percentages of my web page because it can get really weird if you've got this image that's really large but the box itself is only a certain percentage of the entire web page. So I want to kind of force that to happen just to make sure that I'm okay on that. I know from having looked at this, let me pull it back here, if I click in here that I can see down here that that's my right banner div. I'm going to come over here to my right banner and I'm going to change that to 425 pixels. I need to obviously make sure that it's pixels and not percentage. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And in terms of height, you know, you can really do anything you want in terms of height. These two particular boxes are 
are governed height-wise by their content inside of them. But later on, we could also spe specify what exactly their height level is going to be. For the moment, I'm going to leave them alone. I'm going to minimize that. Now, I've come to a website um, that's off of your instructional page, and this is education quotes. You may certainly use any quote that you want under any category or you don't even have to do a quote you you might have something else that you have in mind but I've gone ahead and selected a, uh, an education quote called education is not the filling of the pail but the lighting of a fire now I have copied and pasted that right here into a notepad just because I want to get plain simple text I don't want to pick up any web stuff that's coming in from the page so I'm just going to copy and paste that there so the next thing I'm going to do is come in here to Photoshop and I'm going to do a file new blank file and I'm going to call it fire and in terms of its width and height I want to go a little bit larger than I what I think I want it to be I know that my overall size is going to be I believe 420 I think I set but 450 is okay 200 is okay here and my resolution is 72 pixels per inch. That's appropriate for a web page graphic. If I wanted to go to a print or if I wanted to do something else with this graphic, I'd probably go much higher. Printing starts around 300 for a low-end print or a smaller print, 600 and higher, 1200 and higher. All of those are print resolutions. And for a web page, a 72 uh, is, is fine. Now, the thing that is also available right here off of this menu is I could choose to make the background contents um, transparent. I'm going to go ahead and make it white. Now I can change that later on and make something transparent but from a design perspective I find that it's just as easy to work off of a white background or if you know that your your text is going to be something very particular you might choose a color background color that you would want um, special to your particular piece, right? So in this particular case, I've chosen white, and notice here that it's automatically left me with a background that is white. Some of the tricks on the keyboard, I can do a control plus to zoom in, or I can do a control minus to zoom out, or obviously I can go up to view and I can do fit on screen, which is the control zero, and that's the one I usually like to use. Now in terms of all of the Photoshop products and many of the modern design products, they all work in the notion of a layer. And the layers you can think of as clear acetate, those things that you would make real old-fashioned transparencies on. And the idea here is that you're going to place on each separate transparency a design element that is the only piece on that particular page so that as you build these transparencies together and layer them the entire thing shows up but then because they're on separate layers you can either take something out by simply hiding it or you can change just a particular layer so that you have a lot of flexibility left in the end so I'm not going to touch my background layer I want to immediately start by making a new layer I can do that down here under my create a new layer icon or I can come up here to where it says view excuse me layer and do new layer okay and now I'm going to do um, I'm just gonna do a quick phrase that's gonna help me remember what this layer is I'm gonna click OK now notice here it says education is not that's gonna be this layer and my background layer is here. Notice my education is not is a transparent layer. If I were to use my eye indicator here and turn that off, I could see that, that it would change over to this transparent uh, background, which is fine. We may be able to use that later on. But by having the white layer on now, or whatever color you've chosen, it allows you to see what you're doing at any given time. Now, in terms of Photoshop and its tools, I always like to think of these tools up here, my move tool and my hand tool as kind of my home base so that whenever I do something on a particular layer, I tend to go do the layer or do the elements and then come back here to, generally speaking, my move tool. And um, that, again, is my mental home base for wherever I am. In this particular case, we are going to and by the way before I move on when I've clicked on to my move layer make sure it says 
or checked off to auto select layer, show the bounding box, and show highlight on rollovers. That just gives you some visuals to know where your layer is, what your content in, on that layer is, etc. Right? I'm going to go to my text tool over here on the left hand side. Now I want to make some choices right from the get go. It's going to just make my life a lot easier. I've gone ahead and installed two fonts. One of them is called Life Lessons. And I've also gone ahead and uh, selected a color, but I, of course I can select any color I would want. I'm going to do dark red orange, or I could certainly do this. I'm going to try to evoke something that has something to do with fire here. And of course I could select my font size and I'm going to start out with a smaller one simply because I don't want it to run all over the page. And I'm going to all, um, type in, or actually I'm going to go ahead and paste the education portion that I've already copied and pasted. Now I could certainly simply type it in and that would be fine. Now the one thing you need to see is that as I've done that, this little green check mark is available and it basically is asking me to check that to commit any current changes. Now depending on what version of Photoshop you have, you might see this little check mark up here on this border or you could actually see it down here in the actual um, line of, of text itself. So it, make sure you look for it because you'll need to commit that change before it will accept anything. But I can see that there. I'm going to go ahead and choose a uh, faux bold just to see what that's going to look like. And I'm also going to pop the um, size up a little bit and I'm going to click in this line and hit enter so that it actually splits across two lines. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go a little bit bigger here and maybe even a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to pop back to my move tool so that I can actually get it in place here. Now quite frankly once it's in place here I can see that I don't really really like the faux bold on here. So I'm going to go back to my text tool over here. I'm going to highlight it once again and I'm going to turn off that faux bold piece. So now it's looking a little bit better but quite frankly I wasn't happy with that color either. So I'm going to actually go radically different and go um, I'm going to go gray for the moment. I think that eventually this will be on a black background, which means that probably gray is not the, the choice of color that I would end up having. But for the moment, I'm going to leave it this way to play with it. I can also play with my letting, which is my distances here, and uh, change that. And what that's doing is that's um, changing the letting between the two lines there in this particular case. So I've written in my little text piece here on my one layer and this is pretty straightforward. Actually I'm even going to go back and change the whole thing to a black. Okay a couple of other changes I could make to this particular piece is on its style. Photoshop Elements and Photoshop Regular have the ability to apply styles to the individual layers and that's really where a lot of the creativity can come in. Let me go ahead and bring this back down a little bit here. Now notice that I've put in my little phrase here and I've gone ahead and um, clicked onto my text type tool. Notice that I haven't actually highlighted the content here. The next changes that I apply will be applied to the entire layer. In this case the layer is all text so that's what would get applied but I don't need to. In fact, if I did highlight it here, notice that my style button goes away. So I'm going to cancel that. And again, I'm not highlighted, but I'm going to come over here to style and I can choose some of these really nice uh, styles. I strongly recommend if you don't like this style, click on edit undo um, because if you get involved in applying multiple styles, which you can do, um, it does get to be pretty wild in terms of um, what it looks like and should you run into trouble 
and you don't like this particular style, but you're not quite sure how to get back to where you need to, to be back to, the best thing to do is go ahead and accept the changes, and then come over here to that particular layer, right click, and choose clear layer style, and that will kind of reset you back to the beginning. Okay, the next part that I'm going to do is I'm going to build a new layer, and I'm going to put the second portion of my phrase in here. I'm going to go ahead and get you started by just clicking on my new layer tool. And <clears throat> this is my layer tool that is uh, going to be the second portion of my text. So I'm going to rename it. Education is not filling the bucket, but lighting. And I'm just going to use a little phrase so that when I'm looking at my stack over here, I can see which that is. Now, the next thing <clears throat> I've done is I've gone ahead and I'm clicked into this particular layer over here. <clears throat> and I've clicked into my text tool, but this time I'm going to choose another font. Um, I'm going to choose a font that I also downloaded here, and this one is called Flame, and this one is called uh, Flame again, excuse me. Now, I could have done this a couple of different ways. I could have actually just done the word fire in a new font and then have left the phrase but lighting a fire but lighting a as part of the original font. Totally up to you as to how you want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and move that a little bit around there. And of course, I can come back to my text tool and change the color on that. Or I could come over to my style tool, and you have to be very careful again of these styles because these fonts are actually so small uh, in relation to the design or the the new style that you tend to lose them altogether. So I'm going to go over to perhaps a glass button, maybe a purple, maybe not. <clears throat> in any case, what I want you to do is go ahead and apply a style to your second layer and <clears throat> go ahead and adjust this to where you like it for your particular phrase. And I will come back in a moment to show you the rest of this.